I'm the nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. In the profitable world of animation, there's a battle going on between hand-drawn and CG. Okay, maybe not a battle, but a conversation. Which one is better? First off, let's clarify the difference. Hand-drawn, or 2D animation, is a series of drawings given motion by quickly displaying one after another. Computer-generated, or 3D animation, is the same idea except it's not drawn but rather created in the computer. So you don't have to draw every single frame, you can just put all your energy into one model and move it as you please. Both of these are amazing art forms, have changed the way people look at cinema, and are a buttload of work. However, where hand-drawn animation used to be the dominant art form in both film and television, CG slowly worked its way in and eventually took over. While hand-drawn is far from being extinct, it's no question CG is being utilized far, far more. There's two areas I like to explore with this. How did CG beat out hand-drawn in terms of popularity, and what are the strengths and weaknesses of both styles? Well, let's see where it all started. Arguably, the first animated film was Gertie the Dinosaur in 1914. A still amazing feat when you consider its animator, Windsor McKay, had to redraw everything in every single frame. The rocks, the trees, the specks of water, all of it had to be redrawn every time Gertie would move. This groundbreaking film would lead to other animations like Felix the Cat, Dinky Doodle, and of course, Mickey Mouse. As the popularity of animated shorts grew, so did the art form. Using cell animation so they didn't have to draw the background in every frame, adding sound so people can finally hear the characters talk, and naturally evolving to color. There was no question the biggest envelope pusher was Walt Disney, not only creating insanely popular shorts and characters with state-of-the-art ingenuity, but also producing one of his biggest gambles, a fully animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The film was a smash, and soon other studios would try to cash in on creating animated features. On the other side of the world, Japan was also breaking new ground too. Despite Disney's work entertaining kids and adults, it no doubt had a family-friendly lean to them. Well, several Japanese studios would go on to create anime, movies and shorts with a very distinct style, usually incorporating more grown-up themes and imagery. America would dabble in this with films like Fritz the Cat and Fantastic Planet, but many Americans still saw animation as kid stuff. But a new form of animation was slowly sneaking into our consciousness. An art form that could make dinosaurs come alive, other worlds look breathable, and even cartoons a bit more realistic. Computer animation gained popularity as a means to create better special effects for live-action films. It wasn't long before it was more utilized not only in cinema but in television too, specifically hand-drawn animation. You see, people were still used to their 2D mascots, but 3D was offering a convenient time saver. Instead of drawing a moving background for every single frame, you just create it once in a computer and you can move it however you like. On top of that, the backgrounds looked more realistic, which sucked many viewers in even more. But this wasn't a big worry for 2D. Sure, 3D can make realistic backgrounds that move, but they can't capture the soul of a living character that feels 100% believable well fuck. Toy Story was one of the first feature-length CG animated films, and not only was it a hit with kids, but a hit with adults as well. The writing had a lot more modern talk that both children and adults could relate to, and on top of that, it just looked more realistic. I know so many adults who said they couldn't get into Lion King or Hunchback because, despite their heavy themes, it still looked kiddish to them. Probably because they grew up with so much animation being aimed at children. But with CG, not only are the lines gone, but the style Toy Story created would be duplicated countless times, with dialogue centered on pulling in just as many adults as kids. But again, big deal, CG still wasn't as universal as hand-drawn. If you were to turn a 2D character like, say, Belle into a 3D character, it wouldn't be too tricky. But if you turn a 3D character like, say, Andy into a 2D character, it would look pretty awkward. The quick simplicity of the drawn line wasn't there, so it couldn't really cross mediums. You can take three circles lined up a certain way and know that's Mickey Mouse. It's that kind of clever simplicity CG just didn't have. If anything, they were focusing on being more realistic, and within a few years, they would often look dated. So, unless this hurdle was jumped, CG would never wipe out hand-drawn- well, fuck again. The Incredibles made a breakthrough that, in my opinion, isn't talked about nearly enough, but is still hugely influential. You see, its director, Brad Bird, did hand-drawn animation first, and he figured out how to turn his 2D drawings into 3D models. After that, most smart animated films designed their characters so that they can look good in both 3D and 2D. 
To make things worse, Disney's hand-drawn studio, the leading animation studio at the time, was not turning out the hits they used to. The audience for 2D cinematic films just wasn't as prominent anymore, and most of their efforts were going into straight-to-video releases. Why see a Disney princess that looks good, but less realistic, when you can see a Disney princess that looks good and more realistic? Don't get me wrong, this wouldn't fool anybody that this is a real person, but it certainly looks more three-dimensional than a beautiful, but still flat drawing. The art form that once combined both 2D and 3D animation was now giving all its focus to 3D and shutting down most 2D studios, including Disney. 2D still pops up in many places, particularly on television, but 9 out of 10 times they're in an industry where CG is massively dominant. One of the places they still do mix half and half, though, is Japan. While there's more than enough 3D animation there too, there's still countless anime being created every day, often utilizing both line work and computer technology. Could it be they had more time to accept hand-drawn for the variety of genres it offered as opposed to just family-friendly? Could it be the constant exposure made them appreciate the simple line just as much as complicated technology? We can't say for sure. But whatever the reason, it's still alive and well while in many other countries, particularly America, it continues to fade. Even when you do see something that looks 2D, it's usually over a 3D model. Only once in a while do you see frame-by-frame -frame drawings used to create life. So, is this the better way? Does it make sense to put more effort into animation that looks more realistic and three-dimensional than animation that looks more simple and flat? It's complicated. certainly won out between these two types of animation, we naturally have to look at their pros and cons. Both of them have created masterpieces of cinema while others have sinned, but what are the unique strengths and weaknesses of each art form? Alright, let's start with what CG has that hand-drawn doesn't. Too soon. On top of being more realistic, like I've said before, CG is wonderful at making breathtaking landscapes. Make no mistake, hand-drawn has created some amazing backgrounds, even utilizing amazing technological breakthroughs to achieve them. But however much detail hand-drawn can create, CG can almost always add more. I know a lot of it depends on the style, and yes, we'll get to that in a bit, but most animation wants the backgrounds to look nice and detailed, but not distracting. And CG is good at adding a lot of detail without taking away from the focus of the foreground. With that said, the characters in the foreground also have a ton of detail. I'm always amazed at the freckles, the hairs, even the pores you can see on a character in CGI. If you were to add all this detail in hand-drawn animation, it would look like a mess. But in the 3D realm, it looks amazing. CG also allows a lot more time to get something right. What I mean is, if you get, say, a reaction wrong in hand-drawn animation, you have to go back and redraw the reaction all over again from the top. With CG, though, the face, texture, practically everything is still there. All you have to do is tweak the details and the timing. The same goes for coloring, enhancing filters, erasing unwanted elements. All of these are improved in a way that hand-drawn animation either couldn't do as well or couldn't do as quickly. Obviously, like with any art form, there's no doubt other elements, but we're focusing on the main ones, and in my opinion, those are the biggest. So, with what seems like a huge advantage, how can hand-drawn animation compete? Well, they're powerful in a different way. You see, where CG feels more realistic, hand-drawn feels more honest. That is to say, its strength is in one of the simplest forms of artistic expression, the line. CG often focuses on trying to fit in everything, where hand-drawn is more about cutting out what isn't needed. You ever notice if you have a smiley face and you suddenly just put a line under each eye, it suddenly looks exhausted? One small line placed under a dot can completely alter your take on a character. If a small line is put on a CG image, it's unlikely it would have that big a reaction, but put it on any of these different hand-drawn characters and it changes the way you look at them. This means whenever a drawing is done, an artist has to ask what is the most essential line to convey a reality. Imagine that mindset going into every single drawing in a piece of animation. 
Now don't get me wrong, a lot of animators work around this to save time by just having a character stand still. It's a common practice. But that just makes the line work even more crucial. Take something like The Proud Family. They didn't have an amazing animation budget or anything, but whenever a character wasn't moving, they had to strike a pose that still gave the illusion they were alive. So even in stillness, the correct line work is essential. CG couldn't get away with that. If a character is still, he just looks dead. There has to be some breathing or reaction or some form of movement where in hand-drawn, even if just the eyes move, that's enough to convey life. Now you don't see this kind of stillness much in CG because it is so easy to move the character once it's created. It still takes time and effort to do it well, but it's almost like puppetry. You make one detailed model and you move it as you like. Hand-drawn surprisingly takes more life to create, though, as each drawing has to be done from scratch the majority of the time. So each frame is somebody breathing life into a character. It's not just moving a CG puppet, it's creating life from the ground up in every frame. You may not be aware of it, but chances are you can still feel it. Take, for example, this scene from Princess Kaguya. When the main character gets upset, the artwork reflects it. It becomes more sketchy and rough, but it's somehow still beautiful. The reason is you can see and feel every stroke, every line, every raw hand movement. You practically have charcoal pencil on your fingers while watching it. While it doesn't look real, it feels genuine. An artist on paper can draw something in seconds and leave an emotional impact. An artist on a computer would need a lot more time probably hours. Yes, more time and detail can definitely lead to a lot of emotion, but sometimes the fast raw brushstroke can be even more powerful. I think the best way to prove this is not necessarily to look at the best what each art form has to offer, but maybe the worst. Let's compare some of the shittiest 3D animation with some of the shittiest 2D animation. On this side of the ring, Rap City Street Kids, one of the ugliest CG cartoons ever made by man. On the other side, the worst Christmas special I've ever seen, The Christmas Tree. Both of these are abysmal, but between these two bowls of shit semen, which one is more appealing? If you're like me, even though it looks awful, you went with The Christmas Tree. Because a shitty drawing has more life in it than shitty CGI. There's just something simpler and more relatable to it. Not everyone has drawn something great, but everyone has drawn something at some point so we recognize the importance and the difficulty of the simple line. Even when you look at the process, which of these looks more engaging? These unfinished CG shots or these unfinished hand-drawn shots? Even the pencil sketches are bursting with more life because it had to be created in every frame. There's something simple, even primal, about 2D animation that 3D simply doesn't have. Its life blooms from a hand drawing a line, not a hand typing on a keyboard, moving around a mouse, and figuring out code. But to most people, a very direct and understandable question arises, what does it matter? Isn't it all about what looks best in the end, the final product? And yeah, yeah it is. And the final product shows that CG has more detail, more realism, and you can make a lot more of them in a timely fashion. So it seems like whatever style you go with, you're going to be gaining something and you're going to be sacrificing something. With hand-drawn, you sacrifice more complex beauty, and with CG, you sacrifice more simple beauty. Now, both can excel in being complicated and simple, but it's obvious where their natural strengths are. So you may think I'm pissed off that 3D beat out 2D in this fight. But honestly, what I'm trying to say is, why does there even have to be a fight? Both of these are amazing art forms, and both of them still find ways to experiment and cross paths. Into the Spider-Verse cleverly combined the world of 2D and 3D, as well as video games like Cuphead. Japan, like I mentioned before, is still mixing the two beautifully as well. I guess what I'm saying is, in a world where one is clearly more popular than the other, it might make sense to look back and see the benefits of the one being ignored. Yes, hand-drawn animation is still around here and there, and it looks great but my fear is it's going to become like stop motion or puppetry, something that still exists, but is only recognized for its genius and beauty once in a while. Now, while stop motion and puppetry are art forms that could certainly fill up their own videos, in terms of how underutilized they are, I wanted to focus on hand-drawn because it's the one I feel like I understand the most. 
Not everyone grew up with CG animation, but everyone grew up with hand-drawn animation. And somewhere we decided it's not as important as it once was. I think it's even more important now seeing how we have new technology and styles of animation that can be experimented with. Sometimes when there's several options as opposed to just one, you realize how much more certain ones stand out and how much more can be utilized from them. Whatever style you prefer, there's a gold mine of creativity that deserves to be dug in more. While both are breathtaking in their own way and I can't definitively say one is better than the other, I can say there's a beauty in complexity, a beauty in simplicity, and both of them, either on their own or together, have a ton more to offer. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to!